So let us check the validity of the following argument. If it rains today, then we will not have barbecue today. Second statement is if we do not have barbecue today, then we will have barbecue tomorrow. What is the conclusion? If it rains today, then we will have barbecue tomorrow. Okay, so when I see such a problem, my first thing is I will start labeling the sentences. It rains today is one of the argument here. Not have a barbecue today. That is one of the second statement. You see here you again have not have a barbecue today. And then we will have a barbecue tomorrow. Okay. And again, it rains today and barbecue tomorrow. So we need three propositions here. The first proposition here is P. It rains today. Q. No barbecue today. No barbecue. today and the third statement R is barbecue tomorrow. So firstly what you should do is you should read your problem carefully and identify how many propositions you are going to need. Now let us write the argument. Now what is the argument? The first statement in the argument is let me look at the first statement. If it rains today means P then not have a barbecue today means Q. So the first statement is actually saying P implies Q. Second, so this is done. If we do not have a barbecue today, not having a barbecue today is denoted by Q, then we will have a barbecue tomorrow. So that is denoted by R. So the second statement is Q implies R and the conclusion is if it rains today means P then we will have a barbecue tomorrow so it is R so if I start with the left hand side it is P implies Q Q implies R can I show P implies R? Is there any rule of reference which gives me this conclusion? So I can simply use hypothetical syllogism. By hypothetical syllogism, P implies R is the right hand side. And therefore, starting with the left hand side, I have reached the right hand side as a conclusion and therefore this argument is a valid argument. Okay, let us discuss this problem now. Check the validity. If A is even, then B does not divide C. So here I have already given you that A is even should be called as P. B does not divide should be called as Q. And D is prime is to be denoted by R. Okay. The argument directly. Because already P, Q and R are given to us. First is if A is even means if P. Then B does not divide C is given by Q. You have to be very careful. What is statement Q? Remember the statement Q is B does not divide C. Second, either D is not prime. Now, what is the meaning of D is not prime? 
okay we know that in the third statement d is prime is denoted by what d is prime is denoted by r so d is not prime is denoted by negation of r or b divides c so now what should i write for b divides c we know that b does not divide c is q so b divides c will be given by negation of q and the third argument is d is prime which is simply given by r and what conclusion do we expect here a is not even a is not even means it should be negation p because statement p means what a is even so what is a is not even it is negation of p okay now we will start with the left hand side and steadily slowly we will start using the rules of reference and try to reach the right hand side so i will start lhs i will write the argument of lhs again p implies q then you have negation r or negation q with r then the next equivalent statement is p implies q now what is negation of r or negation of q we have to think about this okay there are many ways to simplify but i am showing one way you may use some different method you may use some different way but you must get the correct conclusion what i am getting okay final output of all of us must be equal now how i am going to simplify this negation r or negation q now we know that an implication if i have an implication a implies b the equivalent form of implication is negation of the first person or the second person right now here if i try to look at this this is negation of the first person or the second person so this in this disjunction can be converted into implication so what should be that implication look at here b is kept as it is the second person is kept as it is so negation q will remain as it is and the person before the implication has no negation so here you have negation a but here there is no negation of a so here the, the left hand side of this implication will be what the negative the negation symbol will go away and you instead of negation r you will just get what you will just get r so what i'm trying to tell you is that negation r or negation q is nothing but the same as r implies negation q because i know this rule in my mind that a implies b is equivalent to negation of the first person or the second person as it is okay very important rule in uh, in this part okay so this negation r or negation q i'm going to replace it by negation r implies i'm sorry r implies r implies negation q comma this r is as it is so i have just changed the equivalence which is given in the center okay the middle one right now what we will do is we will just switch the order instead of writing this first this second and this third i will write the first as it is i will write this second and i will write this third because three things are given to us you can use them in any order so i will just change the order so p implies q r in the second place and third place is r implies negation q now look at this look at these two r and r implies negation q this reminds us of modus ponens what is modus ponens modus ponens says that if you have p and p implies q then the output 
will be just q so if i compare this situation with mod exponents i have r and r implies negation q the conclusion of this entire thing by mod exponents will be just negation q by mod exponents and here you have p implies q as it is and p implies q i can now replace by its contrapositive what is the contrapositive of p implies q the contrapositive because p implies q is equivalent to its contrapositive okay what is what is contrapositive of p implies q negation q implies negation p so i will replace this p implies q by negation q implies negation p and a uh, negation q as it is right now if you look at these two statements negation q implies negation p with a negation q i will just change the order okay i will just write negation q first and then i will write negation q implies negation p on the next page so which is equivalent to negation q comma negation q implies negation p okay and now this again looks like what this again looks like mod exponents right a and a implies b what is the output of a and a implies b the output of a implies a and a implies b is just b so what is the output equal to what is so by mod exponents what am i going to get by mod exponents i am going to get it as negation p and therefore we have reached the right hand side that was expected and therefore this argument is what this argument is valid 